bringing robots out of the cage, in other words, building robots that can safely operate around humans in human-scale environments, is the biggest challenge facing robotics today. Solving this challenge will have a huge impact on the role of robots, enabling them to become part of our everyday life. Imagine a household robot built to help the elderly and disabled in their homes. Such a robot could perform chores such as washing dishes, as well as providing medication reminders and allowing family members to communicate via telepresence. With this functionality, it could also supplement existing emergency alert systems such as Life Alert by helping EMTs remotely diagnose the extent of injury and determine false positives such as the one my grandfather experienced recently in which the dispatcher was unable to contact him using the phone-based alert system. A live-in robot to perform basic tasks and assist with emergency contact would be highly useful in his case and that of many others. However, many problems must be solved in order to take robots out of factories, where they perform structured tasks in safety cages, to unstructured, changeable environments shared with humans. One of these problems is mapping. To navigate, the robot must map a living space and cope with changes such as a chair being moved or a person walking across a room. Static maps such as this represent the state of the art in robotic mapping. Using distance data from depth cameras like the ASUS Xteon or devices like the LiDAR sensor used on self-driving cars to create maps modeling both permanent and temporary obstacles is an open area in software research, as are path planning and navigating using the map. The real-time nature of robotics adds even more challenge, as robots must move at a reasonable speed while navigating. A second problem we face in bringing robots into spaces shared with humans is physical safety. I have had the opportunity to work briefly with the state-of-the-art Willa Garage PR2 robot. The PR2 arms are very sophisticated when measured by reach, strength, and degrees of freedom, but they also contain many unseen safety features. First, the arm's mass is low and its movement speed is controlled so that impacts with a human will not cause injury. Second, the arm is back drivable. You can easily overcome the robot's motors and push it out of your way. Building robots that are sufficiently strong and fast to be useful, yet safe for humans to be around, interact with, and bump into, has many mechanical and control system engineering challenges that are areas of current research. Yet a third major challenge is generalized object grasp. For example, my three-time RoboGames medal-winning robot Duhingus Maximus must grasp a block of known size. This seemingly simple task was a significant challenge, yet it is easy when compared to emptying a dishwasher filled with unpredictable shapes at unpredictable locations. If path planning is difficult, calculating the angle at which to grasp an object is even worse, and different objects also require different grip strengths. These are just three of the many challenges that modern robotics engineers must solve for robots to come out of the cage and be safe yet practical for assisting humans in our world.